Hey guys, Jeff Schneider here. Today I'm gonna to show you how to analyze a chord progression, which is such an important skill to have, especially if you wanna memorize tunes. If you can understand how all the chords work together, then it'll really, really, really help you memorize those chords. All right, we're gonna use all the things you are as an example here. The first thing you wanna do is identify the key center. And at least for the beginning here, all the things you are starts in the key of A flat major. So what you're gonna do is write A flat with a colon. That indicates the key center. Now, how do I know it's an A flat major? Well, a lot of the times the first chord is the key center. In this case, the first chord is F minor seven. Now I know this is not the key of F minor seven because if you look through the first few chords here, we have F minor seven, B flat minor seven, E flat minor, E flat seven, and then A flat major seven. So it just, you know, this screams uh, six chord, two chord, five chord, one chord. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say that, then I think you should go watch the video that I made called the last chord scale chart you're, you'll ever need, something like that. And I'll link it up here. And it, it basically tells you about a chord scale chart that I made that'll really help you navigate through the, uh, the chord functions. All right, back to this. So I'm gonna highlight the key centers in uh, blue, just so it's easy to see. And then we'll do everything else in red. So as I said, this first chord here is, let's go to red, great, is a six minor seven chord. Now why is it six? Well, because F is the sixth scale degree in the key of A flat major. And remember, that's our key center here. F is the sixth scale degree. We have A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F, six. So six minor seven. All right, going forward, we have a two minor seven for the B flat minor seven. Again, B flat is the second scale degree in the key of A flat. Okay, continuing on. Anybody have an idea of what E flat seven is? I kind of said it before. It's not E flat hand. It's E flat, uh, it's a five seven chord right there. And then we finally get to our one uh, major seven. So a very straightforward chord progression coming up front here. We have the six, the two, the five, and the one. And these are all diatonic. Um, what do I mean by that? What is diatonic? Diatonic means within the scale. So all of these chords fit within the scale of A flat major. And again, check out the chord scale chart that I made. That'll help uh, explain what it is that I mean by that. Going forward here, we have the D flat major. What's D flat major? Well, it's the four major seven another diatonic chord. The four chords in a major key are, as long as they're diatonic, always gonna be major seven chords. The quality is always gonna be major seven. Just like the six chord is always gonna be minor seven, and the two chords gonna be minor seven. Now there are gonna be some instances where we break out of that diatonic mode and go into a more chromatic harmony and some substitutions and all kinds of crazy stuff, but so far, it's all diatonic, which is which is really nice. Makes it easy to remember. But guys, guess what? Coming up next here, something something uh, different's happening. We have a G7. Now, G7 is a great example of a chord that doesn't fit into the key of A flat. It doesn't. First of all, what's the third of G7? It's B. There's even a B in the melody right here. Is does B belong in the key of A flat? Definitely not. Look right here in the key signature. Got a B flat. So B is not a B flat. Meaning B does not fit in the key signature. So we're breaking out of the key of A flat here. What key are we going to? Well, let's look a little bit ahead. We've got the G7 going to C major seven. That's a pretty classic five one motion. So what I'm gonna do is rewrite in here C. So now we're, we're in the key of C major. So when I write this letter here with the colon, it's indicating that we have moved keys. You have shifted keys. So now we have a 5-7. Let's go back to red. You know what? I'll just do this. I'll copy this over. So we have a 5-7 here going to, and I'm going to do some copying here, just faster, going to 1 major 7. 5-7 going to 1 major 7. Okay? Um, let's, uh, let's look forward to the next measure here. We have a C minor 7. What's the C minor 7? Well, now something, something else is happening here. We're not in C major anymore, obviously, because C minor does not belong in C major. Um, well, let's look ahead here. C minor seven, F minor seven, B flat. 
This looks awfully familiar. It's actually the same exact chord progression as the first four measures. We're just in a different key center. So if A flat was the key center for the first four measures, and this is the same kind of thing, well, guess what? E flat here is the key center for this part of the tune. So what I'm going to do here is, again, write in an E flat to indicate E flat major. And as I said, this is all the same stuff. So I can just bring this down. This is 6 minor 7. We got a 2 minor 7 here. F is the 2 in E flat. You guys following along? B flat is the 5. And then we hit the 1 major 7. You know what? The pattern continues. A flat major 7. That's the 4. So already you can see how there's a lot of repetition within this tune. And by analyzing the chord progressions, we're able to identify that repetition and become aware of it so that it's a lot easier to memorize. All you have to memorize now is that you have this chord progression here and then it repeats in a different key. That's a lot easier than, remem than memorizing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, however many chords in a row. That's a lot of information. It's much better to chunk it down into smaller bites. Bits, bites, whatever. Okay. Uh, similar thing happening now. We're going from a D7 to a G major 7. That means we are breaking out of the key of E flat major. So we're going to do a 5. We're going to grab the 5, 7 here. And we're going to grab the 1 major 7. And then we're going to switch the key just like we did before. And now the key center is going to be C major. Cool? Oh, sorry about that. C major. Bam. Okay, no, it's not C major. What am I saying? It's G major. Okay, five to one. D7 to G major in the key of G major. So is there a pattern here? We got A flat major at the beginning, and then it modulates to C major. Modulate is just a fancy word for a key change. Um, and then we we have E flat major, and then it modulates to G major. Is that a similar pattern? Well, let's see. A flat major going to C major. That's going up a major third. Look at this. E flat major going to G major. That's again, up a major third. Recognizing the patterns makes it so much easier to memorize. Moving on to the bridge. We're going to stay in the key of G major here. Why? Because this is a 2, 5, 1 in the key of G major. So let's grab this. We got the 2, dragging it over here. Grab this, the 5, 7, and then the 1 major 7. Easy. 2, 5, 1 for the bridge. Okay, something, something's happening here. We have an F sharp minor 7. F sharp minor 7 doesn't, doesn't fit in the key of G major. Why? Well, look at the chord tones. We have F sharp, A, C sharp, and E. I'm just spelling the chord tones for an F sharp minor 7. Which of those notes does not, does not belong in the key of G major? C sharp. There's no C sharp in the key of G major. It would be a C natural. So that means that something's happening here. We're doing a little modulation here. Do you have any idea what it is? Well, let's look ahead again. F sharp. B, E. That's a 2, 5, 1 in the key of E major. So let's do the key change. Grab the G, make that an E. And then let's write out our 2, 5, 1. 2, 5, 1. Okay, good. Next chord, C augmented 7, C altered, whatever you want to call this. We're, we're, uh, we're changing keys again. What are we doing? We're going back to the original key. So what was the original key? It was A flat major. Okay, uh, copy this over and make it an A flat. Now the, C, the C7 here is a little interesting because C7 doesn't actually fit in the key of A flat major, right? Because the, the third of this chord is E natural. And as we already identified in the key signature, you have an E flat, not an E natural. So this is kind of a, a funky chord here. It relates more to this F minor 7. This is something we call a secondary dominant. Secondary dominant means it's the 5 of this chord right here, which is the 6. F minor 7, just like it was up here. F minor 7 up here. That's the 6 right here. So this is the 5 of 6. So to make more sense, maybe I'll, uh, I'll write in 6 here. This is 6 minor 7. And then the way to indicate a secondary dominant, oops, the way to indicate a secondary dominant is by writing 5, 7, slash, and then whatever it is the dominant of. In this case, it's the dominant of the 6 chord. So you write 5, 7 of 6. That slash is like an of. 5, 7 of 6. 
C7 is the is the dominant, the five. Five and dominant are the same thing. So when I say five, seven of six, or I say that C7 is the dominant of F minor, it, it, that means the exact same thing. So we have five, seven of six. C7 is the five, the dominant of F minor. Five, seven of six. Okay, so now we're on the sixth chord. We're gonna go through it just like before. This is just like the beginning. We've got the two minor seven. Let's grab a, let's grab one nearby. You got two minor seven, you got five, seven. E flat is a five. This is just like the beginning, one major seven. Okay, um, now it changes here. This is different from the beginning. We're going to D flat major. What's D flat major? We're still in the key of A flat. D flat major is the four major seven chord. Now, what do we have here? D flat minor seven. This is just like a little bit of a um, modal mixture. The four minor chord, when you, when you make the, the four a minor chord rather than a major chord, you know, the minor chord doesn't fit in the A flat major scale, but it's a very popular chord substitution to make the four um, minor. It's borrowing from, from another mode. But I don't, I don't wanna to get too into that, but you can write four minor for this, four minor seven. Going, going on, we have the C minor seven, which is what? What is C? We're still in the key of A flat here. C is the third. Then B diminished seven. What the heck are we gonna do for that? Well, I think we're just gonna write flat three. You know what? Let's keep these capitalized. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll come back to that. One, two, three. There are three minor seven. And then for the diminished, we'll we'll write flat three um, diminished seven. That's another popular little chord substitution to be thrown in. Finishing it off, it's pretty basic. Two minor seven, five seven, one major seven. 251 in the key of A flat. From there, G7 to C7. Why is that there? It's in parentheses. Well, this is to indicate how to get back to the F minor here. Uh, let's, let's work backwards here, actually. So the C7, again, that's the 5 of F minor, just like we did up here. 5 of 6, C7 is the same deal. All right. And then the G7, well, you know, the G7 is interesting because G7 doesn't really fit into the key of F minor. F minor. So I don't know. What should we write? What should we do this as? You could call this the. Um, you know what I'm going to call this? I'm going to call this the two seven, the two dominant seven of six. So you've got the two dominant seven of six going to the five seven of six. I think that's the best way to do it. If anybody else knows a better way, you know, let me know. But I, I think that's a pretty good way to do it. Um, so this is your this is your full analysis here of all the things you are. Memorizing the chord functions is the best way to memorize the tune, as I said before. So if you can find the patterns, find the repetition, it's just gonna make it so much easier. You know, you've got these eight bars up front, then it repeats in the in the new key of, of E flat, then the bridge continues on in the key that we ended in, G major continues through all the way to here. Now, how do you remember that it goes from G to E? Well, one, one way to remember it is that the key center changes from uh, G to an E, it goes down a minor third. So before we were up here and we remember, we, uh, we talked about how the, the key center changes from A flat to C, it goes up a major third. And that's what happened here. It goes E flat to G, it goes up a major third. Now, when we go in the bridge, we have G major going down a minor third to E. So, in the bridge, just remember, it goes down a minor third to E. Then it gets us back to the beginning. We're in A flat all the way through the end. Um, that's it, guys. That's the whole tune. It's a. It's it's actually you know for a tune that's called so many times at jam sessions, and it's actually you know it's usually taught pretty early on in the stages of jazz education. You know when you're when you're learning tunes, it's actually a pretty complicated tune. A lot of key changes, but that's actually what makes it such a great tune also. So it's a lot of fun to play. I hope this analysis helps you learn this tune. And 
I really encourage you all to pick other standards and do the same process. Try to uh, analyze them, and you know, give it a shot. If you want to send, if you want to give it a shot with uh, any standard that you guys like, you can email it to me, Jeff Schneider Music at gmail.com, and I'll take a look at it and let you know how you did with your analysis. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'm Jeff Schneider. Uh, comments, questions, welcome below. Please subscribe, and I'll see you next time. <music>